One of the biggest things that we experience today is in our residential construction or residential structures is renovation and also at the same time demolition. One of the big things is that we have to understand what all that means to us. In chapter three, uh, it pretty much gets pretty definitive in regards to what you're going to be doing there. And it says identify the basic regulations and apply to the building construction project. Now, how many homeowners go out and get a building permit to redo a home? I would say not many. The biggest thing is, is that today we are dealing with a lot of modular type construction and how that influences fire protection is greatly right now. Big thing is identifying the hazards to firefighters and construction during renovation and demolition. One, it still remains a constant that the most dangerous fires that you can have are the buildings that are under construction, brand new, and the buildings that are in demolition. So keep that in the back of your mind. Recognize how the material shapes and effects are, are, are resistant to compressive load and how they can deflect. The biggest thing is, is understanding the inherent dangers. Construction regulations, pretty much everything is underneath the International uh, Building Code or the, I, the IBC. The other thing is, is, look at it from another standpoint, is that you have uh, the fire code. And that's now underneath the International Fire Code and Plumbing and Electrical Codes. They're all the same. I mean, they're all under one universal code, uh, code standard. <clears throat> the other issue comes about is local zoning and also ADA requirements and insurance regula regulations, excuse me, and construction safety regulations. Another big thing on the horizon now is the environmental conditions. Proper silting of the facilities that you have their foundation put in so that, so that dirt can be uh, basically uh, contained and not run off in the design process goes along like this if you're having something built you have to have an architect you have to have the architect stamp in the state of Ohio if you have structural engineering uh, issues with that a structural engineer has to sign off civil engineer has to sign off on that as well mechanical engineer an electrical engineer and a fire protection engineer if you're putting in a sprinkler system or some sort of fire protection system. The big thing is is that the general contractor and the subcontractors are all here to the building codes and to the design st standards that have been de developed from the very beginning under the architect, the structural engineer, and the list goes on. Big thing is you got to remember it through all this process <clears throat> is that people understand the blueprints, understand the building permit, and how those inspections work from the building department. Site preparation is important. That's why you, you have uh, not only a zoning inspector inspect the, uh, the site, but you also have a building official to make sure that the foundation, the footers, all those meet uh, the, the building standards and built to spec. Uh, components below grade, superstructures, substructures, and foundations are all part of the site preparation. And then the excavation is important too. They have to dewater uh, if they have a, a large rain and you got a footer in there. It has to have all the water out before the light of pour concrete in it. And at the same time, <clears throat> they have to be braced and uh, solid bracing. They have to have cross lot, cross lot bracing, excuse me. Breakers and tiebacks that hold everything up. This is a good example right here of site, uh, site preparation. You have the, a poured foundation wall that's been put in. That's all been poured in sections and, and cured out. And then now all of a sudden now you have the, the I-beams that are put in, steel I-beams for sort, supporting the floor joists. And now you're seeing insulation on the interior walls. That's part of that. And also on the exterior, you'll have a foundation that will be coated with a tar-like substance for one th reason only. Insulating foam and electrical conduits and plumbing are all part of what goes in in the site preparation. <clears throat> Foundations can be uh, in years past, slurry walls, fieldstone walls, and pure beam foundations. Modular construction is just what you see in this picture. It comes in on a crane, gets set up, and be done with it. Otherwise known as a mobile home. <clears throat>
Here they're giving you a put good, pretty good example in a modular construction. This particular one was in a fire. You see the floor and the ceiling, how that's all put together. You can see that the timber isn't all that big. Again, I talked to you about buildings under construction, how they can be uh, fire, uh, be a fire threat. So the big thing is you got to look for the hazards. When you're building a building, you got to look at all the things that they're welding, the dangers that goes along with welding and a cutting operation. And also, too, a lot of times when buildings are going up, somebody doesn't get paid. And now the next thing you know, you have an arson fire. And an arson fire is chilling because either there's a subcontractor or an employee or someone didn't get paid and says, I'm going to get my money out of them. Framing of uh, wall work and false work and standpipes are all part of what goes in at the very beginning, how a building is going to go up and when it's going to stand on its own. And the big thing is, more than anything else, buildings under a hazard, <clears throat> hazards can collapse. And this is a good example of that in this picture where you end up with a per progressive uh, collapse and also buildings that also are being built at, that have to have some sort of uh, uh, basically earth moved and they use explosives to do that how that's all done and generally those type of situations are very guarded and very controlled <clears throat> big thing is is a building under renovation generally sometimes is occupied during the day normal business but the biggest thing is we find out most of the time is that fire protection systems are disabled. Egress patterns change. And then you also have some time for them to try to do it themselves, which creates a bigger problem. Hazards under construction and demolition is a good example of this. One of the things I wanted to show you in this slide, it's in your book too, but you can see how the framing of the building is there. But Look what's happening with all the floorings that have been dismantled from an exterior wall. They're just sitting there kind of cantilever. So you got to be very careful that those don't collapse. Uh, materials. This is something that you all need to dig into. There's natural and synthetic materials. Most of the big fires we've seen in the earlier part of the uh, 1900s was a uh, uh, fires from uh, natural materials uh, cotton uh, does not burn very well but when you start using hemp and other products for wall covering burlap things like that uh, that create uh, an opportunity for fire spread there's softwoods which is normally your pines and hardwoods are oak uh, your dimensional lumber is pretty much what it is right now it's less than two inches for a normal dimensional lumber two to four inches Timber is greater than five and chemical treatment, meaning uh, pressure treated lumber and also insect resistance and fire resistance. Um, well, it's very compressive and strength and can vary. It's very good material, to be honest with you. But it's got to be used in the right form and the right material has got to be used, the right wood. Oriented strand boards, you see a lot of this now. This is how they're putting joist systems together. Uh, basically, you have particle boards with two pieces of uh, uh, timber on top and on the bottom from the top cord and bottom cord and that's generally how things are going together today to eliminate uh, the need to have solid uh, wood at that point <clears throat> problems you got is old material will be left behind a lot of old tiles ceiling tiles are still there that just been painted a thousand times but the big thing is that they need to be replaced with a new material more efficient material you got stone and masonry that you got to look at. Uh, it, it, stone and masonry are, are, are great products, but if they are weathered and spalled, then you've got bigger problems. Concrete is like a uh, mixture is poured of cement aggregates and water, and then they are at the same time, sometimes they use an accelerator in them, and this is how they build, uh, build the cast in place buildings. Metal is again, again, wrought iron and cast iron is used a lot. Structural steel varies uh, the types of shape. Remember, the steel when it's heated up elongates when it's heated, fails about 1,000 to 1,100 degrees. So most big building fires, when you see, um, you'll still see steel go out like this and then twist. When a twist is like that, that means it's heated beyond its tenfold strength and it's going to collapse.
generally what happens it blows down good example of cold rolling steel construction right there and the big thing is aluminum uh, we're using a lot of that on storefronts now where aluminum framing is around the storefront like this and then you have the side lights on each side glass most of the glass today we have is tempered uh, you get some special incidents where it's blast resistant in special applications. Glass today is also tempered to the point and also tinted so that it can shield the sun away. Asbestos, we don't see much of that anymore. Most of the fireproofing we see today is not as not has does not have an asbestos base to it. They've been moved away from that. Synthetic materials. One of the biggest fires we had was in Rhode Island was the Station Nightclub fire, which was foam materials put on the wall for insulate for soundproofing, and turned out when they used the uh, smoke pods for the flame or little flame pods uh, that caught the the non-certified foam on fire, which ended up with a catastrophic event. We're using a lot of synthetic materials on the outside of the buildings now mainly for for helping with installation and complete competing com, completing excuse me composite multi-layer sheeting panels and resin panels put them in place for better insulation gypsum drywall is still used heavily today and we have alternative organic materials in green construction we see some of these um, um, products turn into straw and bamboo and fiber bamboo is very good material but it's not a very good alternative in cold weather climates see the shapes that they're talking about the compressor load paper uh, how things are put together there and then basically structures come in a various variety of, uh, of various variety of uh, components and then at the same time each one of those buildings may have a different set of regulations that govern it and that's why the professionals are involved and why the design and the construction process has to be monitored closely. Preparing a site for construction with the necessary of all new buildings is key to success and helps the fire service understand how the building's put together and also know the obstacles the fire service is going to run into. Chapter 3 is very important. Uh, I'm putting this up tonight for you so you all can look at that before your homeworkers do. Thank you.